kids come to my house at Halloween, they don't get candy. But I'm not a Halloween humbug. You see, way back when I was a part-time disc jockey, I used to haul out half of my equipment onto the front yard every Halloween and set up this huge sound and light show. I had these flashing strobe lights and glowing goblins and spooky sounds until all the neighbors started to put on more extravagant displays than me. Oh boy, here I was trying to keep up with the Joneses and I got outdone by the Adams family. And it took a lot of time, too, and I wanted to spend my time on what mattered most. So anyway, I thought to myself, okay, I'm a creative guy. Uh, well, this Halloween thing, what's it all about? It's, it's a transaction, trick or treat, right? We'll trick you, or unless you give us a treat, we give you candy. But I thought, well, does it have to be candy? Uh, what else? Uh, we can give them little toys, that's kind of bulky. Or a little book, oh, that's way too serious. Or we could roll a little paper up with a poem and a magic scroll. Ah, that's it. A poem. I write poetry. Ah, let's see. I'll, I'll write a couple of poems, rotate them back and forth every year. Kids won't know the difference. Well, this year I'm up to poem number 17. And 300 kids come to my house every year for poems. Now, not all the poems are just for kids. Some of them are for adults as well like this one. Mommy, I'm bored. There's nothing to do. I don't know what's next. I don't have a clue. I read all my comics. My coloring is done. I played with my toys. They're not so much fun. I finished my homework. There wasn't too much. Rectangles, triangles, circles, and such. I don't want to finish my drawing right now. The one with the barn and the horse and the cow. There's a whole lot of clay, but what should I make? A monster from Mars or a big birthday cake? I could build a, an old castle with all of my blocks or play that weird game with the hen and the fox. I'm squirming around in Dad's favorite chair. I go upside down, put my legs in the air. I might twist around all my fingers and toes or turn up my face and turn up my nose. I'm here all alone. There's nothing to do. I stare out the window and look at the view. I'm bored of this boredom. I've now had enough. I don't want to play with any old stuff. But what I would like when there's nothing to do is just to spend time with someone like you. Let's play with some cards. I don't know the name. It's like Crazy Eight. It's a wonderful game. I could stop being bored. I think I know how. Mom, can you be with me now? I really don't care what you do, you and I, just reading together or playing I Spy. The thing I want most from my mom and my dad is time spent with me, and that makes me glad. Well, that's all about connecting kind of one-on-one. -on -one. But I had a chance to connect with 200 other people recently. It was the Luminato Arts Festival, and myself and 200 other amateur dancers performed a 30-minute piece in Nathan Phillips Square, kind of a combination of line dancing and modern dancing put together. Now we had about three months of rehearsals. That was time well spent, for sure, because we put on four fabulous performances in Nathan Phillips Square. Now, at the end of each one, the audience was invited to join us for a giant dance party. We were all pumped up, and so here we are, dancing away, and I thought, time to try some old-fashioned touch dancing. So I asked one of the partners from the show, got into position, classical touch dancing position, holding hands, and we were off, grinding hips, turning around, spinning away, pirouettes. It was grand fun, and I was catching my breath at the end. And a woman from the audience walks over to me, completely unknown to me. She says, my husband's over there. We never get the chance to dance anymore. Could I do that with you? I thought, oh, OK. This is kind of like having an affair with someone out in Nathan Phillips Square with the husband watching. 
I said, sure. So we took our position, holding hands. We spun around, twisted out, pirouettes, dancing away. Though all the time, I've got my eye on the husband over there. We finished up, and we went over to talk to him. And, you know, we, he was asking questions about the performance and the rehearsals. This was a bit weird. I, I had literally just swept his wife off her feet. A few minutes later, we parted, and I went back to doing some more dancing. And there I was dancing with some of the other folks, and out of the corner of my eye, a couple of minutes later, I turned around, and there they were, husband and wife, embracing and dancing together. And I thought, wow. So that inspired this poem. The world is unkind as events let you down. The troubles you see induce a sad frown. You question yourself and what you could do to rectify matters and set things anew. These difficult times when much seems amiss, you stare in dismay across the barren abyss. Apprehensively blanched, you toil day to day. Then you hear a faint sound that's wafting your way. A familiar tune with a head-nodding beat. You follow the rhythm, begin tapping your feet. But that's not enough. You rise from your chair. You take a few steps, throw your hands in the air. The sound amplifies as you seek out the source. The decibels build a powerful force. Your body is bouncing. You rock to and fro. Excitement is swelling. You've just got to go. You sashay across, then leap off the ground. The beat is incessant. Your hips move around. On the side, someone watches, awkwardly shy, decidedly lost. They would never let fly. You reach out your hand and invite them to dance, to step on the floor and for once take a chance. Now two of you dancing, while others look on, then more and more join. The apathy's gone. A pulsating swarm, you're all moving now. The movement infectious, there's no sacred cow. The world spins around, it twirls on its way. The chorus alluring, you spin on your way. Jazz leaps and dosados, pas de carou, pirouettes extensions and a fast boogaloo, arabesque shuffle, a two-step divine, high-kicking heels that form a long line, stag leaps and quadrilles, freestyling popping, kickball change waltzes, hip-hopping locking, cha-cha and foxtrotting, pivot and swing, moonwalking porta bra, rotating fling, gyrating breakdancing, cakewalking jive, eight counts and rhythm that all come alive, elbows and shoulders, fingertips snacking, disco or techno and fast-talking rapping, bodies in unison stomping their feet, gyrating, thrusting and pounding the beat, Twisting and sweating, the jumps are contagious, patterns complex, the spins are outrageous, grooving and moving and nothing highbrow, a flourishing finish, and all take a bow. <laughs> the dance is complete, you're back at your place, assuredly brighter, a smile on your face. You ponder the world, how kind it could be, when ensembles aligned, set themselves free. There's much more to dancing than just having fun, when all through the world, hearts are beating as one. So I learned from all that, I'm certainly passionate about poetry, I'm passionate about productivity. As Michel said, I put the two together in a book of productive poems. I just want to go out and spread the world and inspire everybody to spend their time better. You have dreams, you have goals, and a burning desire. With heartfelt commitment, your passion's on fire. The connections you make enhance who you are. Those who you touch know who you are. You just say hello, I was thinking of you. You'll make someone's day and feel better too. The steps you can take are all close at hand. A future that's bright and just what you planned. My deep desire is when you'll happily boast that you're spending your time on what matters most.